When I was a kid, I loved Greek mythology. Before attending school massacred, absolutely butchered any love I had for reading books. I loved reading books, especially about mythology. This one book series by Gustav Schwab in particular. I used to read those books again and again. I loved Odysseus, I loved reading about his adventures in the Odyssey and how he outsmarted and blinded the Cyclops Polyphemus. And when Disney's animated film Hercules came out in 1997, I was enchanted with it. I was overjoyed when the Hercules video game was released for PS1. I played it over and over. So now that three years have passed since the end of my brief education of just 18 years, I've been reading more and more books. And recently I decided to rekindle my love for Greek mythology and refresh my memory of Greek gods and heroes, particularly Hercules and Odysseus, because I loved them the most. And boy was I wrong. Not only that I didn't rekindle my love for Hercules and Odysseus, I found out that, contrary to what 5 year old me in all my wisdom at the time thought, those guys were pretty much pieces of shit. <coughs> so now that my childhood memories of famous Greek heroes are demolished, let me tell you why most of the Greek heroes were pieces of <coughs> shit. Since I put Hercules in the thumbnail and you clicked it, it's only fair that I should start with him. Hercules is considered to be the greatest and strongest Greek hero of all time. He is famous for the 12 labors of Hercules, in which he battled various dangerous monsters, most notably the Hydra and Cerberus, the three-headed dog. But that's only half the story. Hercules is also known for his outstanding stupidity and frequent bursts of sudden anger, during which he would destroy anything in his path. When he was a child, he didn't like music classes, so he regularly killed his music teachers by banging them on the head with a flute. He didn't stop when he grew up. He once killed a serving boy because he accidentally poured water on his hand. Water on his hand. Oh wow, that's just too much. No wonder he got angry. In Disney's film Hercules, he ends up living happily ever after with Megara. He actually does end up with Megara and has children with her. But in reality, he goes mad and kills her and their kids by shooting them full of arrows and or throwing them into a fire. Don't worry though, Hercules found himself another wife since the bachelor life didn't really suit him. But my favorite story about Hercules' idiocy is one about him and his close friend Telamon. During a siege in the Trojan War, Telamon was first to break through the Trojan Wall. Hercules was so jealous of him being more courageous than him that he turned on Telamon. When Telamon saw the moron coming his way to murder him, he quickly started gathering nearby rocks. To which Hercules asked, why are you collecting rocks? Telamon said, I am building an altar to honor the great victor Hercules. To which Hercules said, Oh yeah, it's all coming together. And decided to spare his life. Number two on our list of assholes is Achilles. Aside from playing Brad Pitt in the movie Troy, Achilles was famous for being a great warrior, due to the fact he was almost invincible, well, apart from his heel. You'd think that a soldier, who is 99% invulnerable to any damage, wouldn't have any problems going to war. However, when the Trojan War started, he tried to avoid the war by dressing up in a dress and hiding among maidens on an island. Even though he was hidden, he was stupid enough to fall for Odysseus' trick. He showed the ladies daggers and swords, and only one maiden showed an unnatural interest, Achilles. When he eventually stopped wearing a dress and went to war, he enslaved a princess named Briseis and made her his concubine. Every Greek hero had a concubine, including the great king Agamemnon, but he was unfortunate enough to enslave a daughter of a priest of Apollo so Achilles told him to give her up to appease Apollo. He says okay, if he gives up Briseis. That was the first and last straw for Achilles. He locked himself in his room and refused to come out. Agamemnon even offered to give her back, to which Achilles said he's not his dad, and he went back to playing Minecraft. He continued to mope for the rest of the Trojan War, and his friend Patroclus got bored and wanted to join the fight again. Patroclus ends up getting killed by Hector, a Trojan general who was really the only moral character in the Holy Iliad. He gets mad at Hector and beats him in a 1v1. After fighting bravely and honorably, Hector only asks Achilles to return his body to his family for burial. Achilles says nope and drags his body around Troy and desecrates it. Number 3. Jason Maybe not the most well-known Greek hero, but he was very famous in ancient Greece for assembling a group of heroes called the Argonauts to find the Golden Fleece after being sent to do so by his king Pelias. Wait, the golden what? Fleece. Don't you know what a fleece is? <laughs> Neither do I. Oh, I thought it was called wool. So anyway, all the Greek heroes were there. Hercules, Atalanta, Orpheus, Telamon and others. They traveled to a faraway land called Colchis, 
and asked its king, Aetes, for the Golden Fleece. The king agreed Jason can have the fleece, but only if he goes through a monstrous trial, go through two bulls with brass hooves that breathe fire and use them to plow a field. Then he should kill a dragon and plant its teeth into the plowed field. The thief should spring up immediately into an army, and then cut down the army before they attack him. Kind of OP. But Jason did it, with the help of the king's daughter Medea, who fell in love with him when Cupid shot his arrow into her heart. Conveniently, she was also a powerful sorceress, and she spends the rest of the story carrying the Argonauts to victory. When they got the Golden Fleece, Medea ran away with Jason, and when her brother came after her, Jason killed him with the help of Medea. After they return home, Jason wants to get revenge on the king that sent him on the horrifying quest in which, to be fair, he didn't even break a sweat on, cause he had cheats on, so Medea dealt with that as well, by manipulating the king's daughters to cut him into pieces. After which Jason and Medea ran away to Corinth. Jason promises Medea he loves her with all his heart and has children with her and they live happily ever after. Nope, he thinks the princess of Corinth is super hot, so now he tells Medea that he wants another wife. Medea is crushed and tells him she killed his brother for him, helped him through the impossible quest of the Golden Fleece, helped him get his revenge on Pelias. Nope, you just love me because Cupid shot an arrow into your heart, so I should really be thanking Aphrodite, not you. By the way, you should be thankful that I brought you to a civilized country such as Greece. Before our last Greek mythical villain, let's have a look at some honorable mentions. Agamemnon When the Greeks were getting ready to set sail for Troy, they were met with sickness and strong winds that wouldn't let them set sail. Agamemnon knew what was to be done. Should we make better ships and wash our hands more? I have a better idea. We'll sacrifice my daughter. What? How's that gonna help? I don't know. Hey, I just talked to Artemis. We can sacrifice a deer instead. Why would I kill an innocent deer if I've got a perfectly sacrificable daughter here? So he sacrificed his daughter and set sail for Troy. Menelaus. The Trojan War was caused by him getting mad at his wife Helen for running away with Paris. So he dragged thousands of people into a 10 year long pointless war. Instead of getting over it and finding another wife that doesn't cheat on him, he went after her. In the end, with Troy destroyed, he confronted her because of her unfaithfulness and went full simp instead and donated some cash to her stream on Twitch. Ajax Ajax the Great was known to be a great soldier, he was incredibly strong and he even almost killed the great Trojan general Hector in a PvP. When Achilles died, he recovered the body from the Trojans with Odysseus. He and Odysseus then act like chimpanzees and fight over who gets his shiny magical armor. So a council is formed and they give the armor to Odysseus. Ajax can't bear not having a dead guy's armor, even though he already has perfectly good armor. So he goes mad and kills himself by jumping onto his sword. And that leaves us with Odysseus, known for his cunning intelligence, self-restraint, diplomatic skills and being the voice of reason. However, when you read into the books, he just spends most of the Iliad and the Odyssey manipulating others and lying to get his own way. He isn't even that good at it, since Athena has to come down from Mount Olympus and pull him out of trouble whenever he is way in over his head. He was an oathbreaker, swearing to Menelaus that he would go to war with him if anyone should take away Helen. When the time came, he feigned lunacy to avoid fulfilling his oath. He abandoned the wounded Philoctetes on a deserted island. And when he later needed his bow and arrows for the Trojan War, he returned to the island and stole them from him. His only supposed redeeming quality is that he misses home and loves his wife and son, but boy does he take his time when he stays with Kirke for one year and seven years with Calypso. He even has seven children with them. His men even have to drag him away from Kirke because they actually miss their families. So that brings us to the end of the video, and perhaps you're wondering what the point of the video was. No idea. I just thought it was interesting that the mythical heroes people looked up to were actually bad people. And maybe I unintentionally just stumbled upon the point. Just because everyone says someone is a hero or a villain doesn't automatically make it so. 